Hi, today we are going to see how to deal with a general problem solving strategy when you have multiple connected rigid bodies. So this could be what are called frames, then later we will see special specialized rigid bodies called trusses and so on. So all of them have the same solution strategy and I'm going to teach you how to do that along with an example. Okay. So this is a fairly straightforward thing except that you have to be very conscious about what you're doing. Okay. So let's go and see how to do this. So general strategy is listed here. First thing we do is we identify and number the rigid bodies. So if you have many rigid bodies, we start identifying the number of bodies starting from zero for the ground because we, we shouldn't forget the ground. There are some reasons why we are very, very interested in that. So that's item one. Item two, identify and label all the connections. <coughs> Excuse me. So whenever you have connections between rigid bodies, you know that already that connectors create blocking forces. So we need to identify and label all the points where the forces and torques are acting. Then we draw a free body diagram for each uh, rigid body with forces and moments at each connection. Then we write the equations of equilibrium for the body and augment it with whatever conditions we want, Newton's third law and so on. I will show you how to do that. Um, the f last one is substitute the known values and solve. So this is actually fairly simple for the kinds of rigid bodies we are going to look at because they all give us some set of linear equations and if you have a decent calculator or Excel or MATLAB or even by hand, you can do it pretty easily. Then comes the last step which is analyze the result and see if you can make any uh, decisions that you need to make. This is how it works. Okay. So let's go and see what happens to the first example. So here is the first example. So I want to see whether this bookshelf is going to work out properly or not. So I want to be able to see what is the uh, what is the kind of load that this bookshelf can can take. So notice that in all of these things, things don't come in nice pictures. You have to make several judgments. If you ask, well, what's the procedure for making a judgment? I cannot tell you. All I can tell you is you have to figure out what's applying forces to this thing. That's a starting point. You have to make a guess of what kind of forces are there. Then you have to make a guess of what kind of rigid bodies are involved and so on. So let's see what we are going to do. So first, I'm going to make a bookshelf that's fairly deep. That's two feet long. So that's about that wide, something like that. If you can see, that's about that wide. And then we're going to assume that we're going to put a maximum load of 80 pounds on it. This is an assumption. I'm not going to put 80 pounds of books on it, but I'm going to design it for 80 pounds because that's what I want to do. And the bracket here is going to be modeled like a big bookshelf here and a uh, strut or a bar that holds it up there. Okay. So now you can see that I have 0, 1, 2 rigid bodies. 0 is ground and 1 and 2 are the other ones. Okay. Very good. So that's what we're going to do. Now we have to label where there are connectors. So you can see that there's a connector here. There's a connect. There's a force here. So I'm going to label that as B. There's a connector here. I'm going to label it as C and connector here as label labeled as D. Okay. Now comes a very critical point. What kind of connectors? You have to decide this. This is not something that will be given to you. So you have to sit, look at the connectors very carefully and ask yourself what kind of connectors are there. In our case, we are going to look at it and we are going to say, you know what, it's probably just a simple screw that screws it up to the wall. So connector A is going to be just a pin joint. So a simple screw is not usually it's not usually capable of taking bending forces. So you cannot bend it. So I'm not going to have any moments or torques. It's pretty easy to twist it out, right? It's not going to really prevent me from doing that. But it will uh, allow me to uh, to it will it will prevent axial motion and uh, sideways motion, shear motion. So it will prevent this way and that way. Similarly, I'm going to assume pin joint here, pin joint here. That's my assumption. How good it is depends upon whether how conservative I am and so on. Typically, assuming things to be pin joints is a fairly conservative setup. As you go up higher, you will see that we will have occasion to think of more and more of welded joints and so on. 
okay so that's one item okay so now we are going to go and we start going to start drawing some rigid bodies so i'm going to draw the free body diagram for the body a so there's a and what are the forces on it i got pin joint forces at a pin joint forces at c and a force at b what i'm going to do is i'm not going to draw x and y components because x and y components may be messy make my free body diagram messy so what am i going to do i'm going to just draw some generic vectors like that other than for the weight w because i know which way that acts that's going to act downwards so i can put a vertical arrow but these two actually i should draw like this and like that but i'm not going to do it because i'll crowd it up but i'm going to indicate it by drawing the force by writing down the force vectors on the free body diagram can you see at a there is a force called a vector which has components ax ay 0 make sense to you x component is ax y component is ay z component is 0 because i don't have anything uh, in this direction in the in the direction that points out at b i have a force b vector whose components are 0 minus w because the y component is minus w and 0 and at c i have components cx cy 0 excellent so that's it because i have assumed pin joint pin joint right now let's look at the bar dc now you have to be clever about bar dc first thing is this is a pin joint oops you notice that this is a pin joint and since it's a pin joint and this force and this force have to be equal and opposite and that is newton's third law so whenever there is a common joint between two objects we use newton's third law so common joint so the forces are drawn opposite and the vector is also given opposite can you see minus cx minus cy let me remind you go with the vectors not have the arrow will confuse you always go with the vectors and things will be fine and at d there is another pin joint and again the components are dx dy dz zero you see what i mean this is how we draw our free body diagrams once we have drawn the free body diagrams i'm going to write down the equations of equilibrium for each of them i'm going to also make sure that i draw um, what is it uh, a reference for each of them so let me see if i can i want to go back and make sure i'm going to put my y axis here x axis like that y axis here x axis like this so for each of the free bodies i'm going to have three equations so i'll have six equations three forces three moments then we'll have to see and figure out whether we have enough of equations and enough unknowns let's make sure we know the unknowns ax ay that's two cx cy that's two dx dy that's two so i'll have six equations and i'll have six unknowns so i don't need any augmentation everything i have taken care of everything okay so let's write down the equations so first one rigid body one rigid body one i have summation of all the forces in the x direction gives me ax plus 0 plus cx equal to 0 summation of all the forces in the y direction equal to 0 will give me ay minus w plus cy equal to 0 summation of all the moments around the point a equal to 0 i'm not going to tell you this because you now used to it this gives me uh, 2 times cy minus 1 times w equal to 0 because this is one unit one right then rigid body 2 i will get summation of all the forces in the x direction equal to 0 gives me dx minus cx equal to 0 why is there a minus cx notice that thing okay summation of all the forces in the y direction gives me 0 gives me 
dy minus cy equal to 0 and then summation of all the moments around the point d equal to 0 this is in the z direction so summation of all the moments around the point d equal to 0 gives me if you remember this angle was 45 degrees and this is 1 so this is 2 that's 2 because of the length of this bar so it's pretty easy for me to compute the moments and it will give me uh, 2 times minus cy minus 2 times minus cx equal to 0 you know this is just xfy minus yfx that's all I'm doing that gives me three equations hey this is fairly easy to solve because I know w was um, um, let's see how much was w w was a 40 80 pounds so this immediately gives me cy equals uh, 40 pounds okay that gives me immediately uh, if you go and look at all the equations you will see that if i look at this equation that will tell me that cx is also equal to 40 pounds so from here the, this one is from here and then once i know cy and cx i can see that ax equal to minus 40 pounds ay equal to 80 minus 40 which is equal to 40 pounds and then dx equal to 40 dy equal to 40 pounds done we calculated all the loads on this i hope you got the idea right it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward but the most important items are the following make sure you know what joints you are using make sure you write down uh, Newton's third law every time you use a common joint so my idea is the following if a joint so if this is free body 2 and I am looking at a joint with free body 1 I will put negative signs if it is joints with free body 3 I will put positive signs you know what I mean so if the if the joint is with a higher free body I will put positive if the joint is at the lower free body I will put negative you know what I mean lower higher means the numbering of the of the free bodies you will never go wrong if you do that in a fairly systematic way so then everything will work then you have to write down the equation of the equilibrium you can solve it you have to count and make sure there is enough thank you very much